to Brands Hatch for the season finale of the Radical Sprint Championship. It's going down to the wire here with a two driver fight for the title. Ben Dimmock arrived with a narrow championship lead over Patrick McCluggan. However, race one that happened earlier today didn't go exactly Ben's way. Let's take a look at the highlights. Well, the way that the grid lined up for the first of the races of the weekend was at number 22, the orange car of Paddy McLuggan was on pole position and his main championship rival, Ben Dimmock, number 77, was alongside. Row two of the grid was the black car of Marcelo Maritiotto and the white and red number 25 machine of Martin Verity. And row three short saw 57, Brian Murphy, alongside the leading uh, PR6 class car, number 85, in the hands of Joe Stables. As the lights went out, it was Ben Dimmock from the outside of the front row of the grid that got a fabulous start and very poorly away was the pole sitter Paddy McCluggan who actually dropped not just from first down to second but from second down to third as Marcelo Maritiotto was able also to work his way through into the lead of the race. The pack of cars headed uphill towards the braking area towards Druids for the first time with again some frantic fights going all the way through the field and what was a very very busy circuit. 28 cars having qualified for this race and there was the leading PR6 class car in the hands of Joe Stables, another driver who had a poor start and had left himself with a chunk of work to do in the early stages of the race. The perfect conditions at Brands Hatch allowed the cars to really stretch their legs on the Grand Prix circuit and Ben Dimmock, number 77 in the lead of the race, was looking to try and build an early advantage over his rivals throughout the course of the race. field of cars spreading its way around the very picturesque brand tap circuit including number 95 which is at the black and silver radical PR6 of Joe Stables who after that poor start found himself in the midfield with lots of work to do thankfully though plenty of time in which to do so Ben Dimmock however in the lead of the race was looking to try and build an advantage between himself and the orange car his main championship rival Paddy McLuggan who sat there in third position Paddy McLuggan, though, was first of all going to have to work his way through and ahead of the radical SR3 RSX of Marcelo Maritiotto, but was going to have to wait for time in which to do that because the safety car came out, bringing about full course yellows and, of course, no overtaking. Once the safety car had headed back into the pit lane, the race was back on and Ben Dimmock again was looking to try and reassert himself into an advantage in the lead of the race all of the time whilst the leading PR6 of Joe Stables was still looking to try and thread its way up through the order car number 95. It was getting very close at the front though with the leading three starting to get together. Ben Dimmock was beginning to feel the pressure from the black car of Marcelo Maritiotto and he was wanting to attack and having little choice but to defend from the orange machine in the hands of Ben Dimmock at the same time. Those were the leading three that really seemed to have the advantage over the rest of the field at this stage in the race. So as the lead three plummeted down Hawthorne Hill, down towards the bottom section of the circuit, the gaps were starting to just get ever closer between the three of them. All of the time whilst they were also keeping at bay, the car in fourth place of Brian Murphy, number 57, the man from the northeast of England, had got himself up into fourth ahead of Martin Verity who was there in fifth position it was John McLeod who at this stage of the race completed the top six. Marcelo Maritiotto though was starting to come under ever more pressure from Paddy McLuggan that was A dropping him into the clutches of the Irishman but B meaning he was falling further away from race leader Ben Dimmock and again Paddy McLuggan had another look to try and make a move as they went towards Druid's corner the door though was closed by Maritiotto as the race wore on, there were also some great fights going on right the way down through the field, not least of which between some of the Radical SR1 competitors. Rob Ellis was being kept very busy indeed by James Barwell as they worked their way around the circuit. And amongst the race leading trio, well, things were getting ever tastier as well. Marcelo Maritiotto was beginning to become rather robust with some of his defence. And Ben Dimmock briefly having to take to the grass there with the pit wall getting ever closer to him. Marcelo Maritiotto was certainly feeling the pressure to try and hang on to second place. He was also, of course, hugely keen to try and keep up onto terms with Ben Dimmock as the three as one still were propelling themselves around the circuit with very little to choose between any of them. 
Marcelo Maratiotto though would still hang on to second place as elsewhere down through the order. As we say, battles were still continuing to rage. Brian Cordwell working his way up through the order as he ticked off yet another one of the competitors in the process. At the front of the field, Marcelo Maratiotto was still feeling the pressure from Paddy McLuggan, who just couldn't work a way through and past. He would look one way, he would look the other, they would do it for lap after lap after lap, but still hanging on to the place would be Maratiotto, whilst number 66, Brian Cordwell, was still managing to gain places. That was Hannah Pym there, who lost out a position to Brian Cordwell, another driver who was working his way up through the order. So Cordwell was now almost inside the top 12. Well, Paddy McLuggan eventually found his way past Marcelo Maratiotto and then started to attack Ben Dimmock for the lead of the race. It was a great move up the inside heading in towards Paddock Hill Bend that put McLuggan into the lead of the race and Ben Dimmock well, then lost out through the back markers just as he lost one place. Marcelo Maratiotto was poised and ready to pounce and put him down from second down to third. Two places lost in a matter of two corners for the championship leader. It may have taken a while for Paddy McLuggan to take the lead of the race, but the battle was still going on, wasn't it, for second and third place between Marcelo Maratiotto and Ben Dimmock. There were also great battles going on further down through the order for places inside the top ten. But Paddy McLuggan stretched his legs towards the chequered flag. It was going to be win number 12 of the season in race number one of three of the weekend for Paddy McLuggan. That meant that the championship was kept alive, but it was always going to be an uphill struggle for the Irishman. Ben Dimmock was leading the championship. Congratulations on the victory, but my word, you had to work hard there. What happened at the start? You dropped down to third. Yeah, no, I just didn't get off the line as quick as these two. Um, and then after that, I was just kind of following around, seeing where Marcel was weakest and try to get past him. So, no, eventually done the job and then got Ben in the paddock and then just controlled at the last end. And put in the fastest lap, so you really did all you needed to do. Yeah, no, we needed a fast lap as well, so it helps count for the snowco challenge as well. So, yeah, no, good day. Marcello. You were really a mixture of defending hard and pushing hard against the leader. Yeah, I, I think retrospectively I was defending too hard towards Paddy. I wouldn't do it again. I had him in his mirrors and I, I, was, I was too aggressive and defensive. I apologise for that. OK, well, that's, that's really nice to hear. No, that, that, that's nice to hear. But uh, you certainly had the speed there to be up there contesting with these guys without question, didn't you? Obviously, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go quite according to plan in the practice, though, did it? Oh, it went quite well. Until oh. the gravel. There was no gravel. No. <laughs> that was another car. Oh, fair enough. All right, yeah. Congratulations, though. Happy with the second place. Thank you. Yep. Well done, That's and we'll see you later. And through to our championship leader, but not champion just yet. But uh, number 77, Ben Dimmock, you, uh, you got the great start there, and you got yourself into the lead. Uh, I guess the safety car was frustrating for you. Yeah, very much so. I had a nice ribbon going, and I seemed to have a nice gap and control it nicely, and I was getting very comfortable and quite content. And then suddenly the safety car comes out, it messes up your rhythm. And the restart didn't go as according to plan as I was expecting. I made a bit of a mess of it. But uh, anyway, we kept the lead for several laps. But that was the longest 20-minute race I can <laughs> ever think of for a long while. We were having 50-minute races last week at Spa. And that was a doddle compared to that. I just think <laughs> with all the pressure of the championship and trying to think about too much, I think, and just overdriving and just not doing what I really do best. So I have better luck next time. And hopefully, hopefully I can get out the lead and do, just keep putting consistent laps in and keep a nice gap and hopefully take the win on the next race, hopefully. Ben Dimmock is still leading the championship, but it's as close as ever heading into race two, meaning that a good result is going to be absolutely vital to keep his championship dreams alive. Ben starts from third on the grid for this race, while his main contender, Patrick McCluggan, starts from pole position. Let's go racing. So with the orange car of Paddy McLuggan on pole, Marcelo Maratiotto alongside him. Ben Dimmock, champion-elect on row two. Ben has just got to keep his nose clean. Paddy McLuggan on pole has got all of the work to do. The lights go out and it's not a great start from Paddy McLuggan. He's already down to second. Marcelo Maratiotto is going to lead as they head up towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Maratiotto leads. Paddy McLuggan's in second place. Ben Dimmock is third. It looks as though the black radical PR6 of Joe Stables is in fourth position. Chris Carr has managed to get himself ahead of number 57, Brian Murphy, who's dropped from fourth on the grid, down to sixth by the look of things, by the time they head round through Druids for the first time. All safely through, very busy circuit with over 26 cars having qualified in the Radical Sprint Championship this weekend, and they can now really start to stretch their legs as they turn through Surtees and onto the Grand Prix section of the circuit here. So with the 
leader having got away. Marcelo Maratiotto will look to try and press on as he heads down. Hawthorne Hill, Paddy McClug in the orange car in second place. Ben Dimmock looking just to settle in, I would suggest, in the race. He leads the championship as long as he keeps Paddy McLuggan in touching distance. And he can see him up the road. It doesn't matter if he finishes behind because there's 69 points between them coming into this race. It's over 80 points available. So if he finishes in third in his respective class, that would be 30 points for Ben Dimmock. And that's where he currently is, which means that if he stays where he is, he is the champion regardless of what Paddy McLuggan does. The rest of this enormous field filing their way through the Grand Prix circuit as back ready to complete lap number one comes our race leader Marcelo Maratiotto was slow low coming round through Clearway's corner he was a little bit robust with his defence in race number one he squeezes Paddy McGluggan fairly this time towards the edge of the circuit and still manages to hang on to the lead of the race so Maratiotto still out front the black car the orange car of the Irishman Patrick McGluggan sitting there in second position Paddy McGluggan will also have his eyes on the Sunoco 200 standings because it may well be that come January of 2016 he heads over to America to race in one of the supporting races at Daytona. The rest of the field working their way through. A great fight going on for 7th and 8th place just heading through shot which was Martin Verity under big pressure there by what looks like John McLeod, the car behind him. And you can see a very, very full circuit of cars here at Brands Hatch this weekend which includes down towards the tail end of the field another couple that are still fighting tooth and nail for positions that's Mark Crader leading pair though getting closer to each other Maratiotto this time is under pressure from Paddy McLuggan as they head up towards Westfield this time through and as they turn their way through Westfield corner well Maratiotto appears backwards Paddy McLuggan appears doing a 360 and that's going to put Ben Dimmock into the lead of the race and poor old Paddy McLuggan who was hoping to try and mount a challenge for the championship, finds himself having dropped right the way down through the order. Contact between himself and Maratiotto as they were vying for the lead of the race has put his main championship rival, Ben Dimmock, into the lead of the race. So Ben Dimmock was right just to drop back a little bit, but Dimmock himself now is under pressure for the lead of the race because Joe Stables is looking to try and push the PR6 through into the lead. Joe, who shared this car with longtime radical racer, his father Richard, over the course of the 2015 season. They've had numerous class wins between them, but not yet have they managed to claim a race victory. They've not actually finished on the overall podium so far this season. A few fourth places, but we've not seen a PR6 on the overall podium, and we've certainly not seen one take a race win. There goes the rest of the field working their way through over the start-finish line, which still includes that great battle that is going on between Mark Crader and those around. corner. Positions having been gained by one of the Radical SR1s further down through the order. And as they then work their way onto the straight, Mark Crader looking to try and put number 27 David Evans under pressure. Here is Paddy McLuggan looking to try and work his way back up through the order. As you say, he's got a chunk of work to do. He's fallen outside of the top eight. There's a spin also and into the gravel by the look of things for number 66. That is the car in the hands of Brian Caldwell. So Brian's also got a large amount of work to do now to thread his way up through the order. Whilst Joe Stables has taken the lead of the race, Ben Dimmock has dropped down into second place. He's in danger of dropping to third as well because the blue car of Chris Carr is not overly far away as they head uphill and towards the right-hand hairpin at Druid's Corner. So out of Druid's and downhill towards the braking area for Graham Hill Bend, Ben Dimmock still in a position that at this stage would give him the 2015 Radical Sprint Championship and Joe Stables in a position that would give him his first outright victory of the season. Look at this fight that's going on. Martin Verity has got John McLeod right behind him and Brian Murphy who was in fourth place a lap or so ago has now dropped behind both of them so he's had an issue somewhere out on circuit as they thread their way through the left-hander at Surtees and start to work their way onto the Grand Prix section once more. Chris Carr starting to come under pressure. The recovering Paddy McLuggan looking to try and work his way up through the order. So Paddy McLuggan, this is exactly where the contact was made. You can see the tyre marks on the tarmac still. But Chris Carr and Paddy McLuggan are still nose to tail as they head round through Dingle Dell up towards Sheen Curve. And then from there, you can see just how high up both of them are trying. They will be up towards the left-hander at Stirling's. Leading pair have got away. It's this battle for third and fourth place that is very, very close. Chris Carr with the recovering Paddy McLuggan right behind him 
as they head onto the brakes and turn their way through Paddock Hill Bend. Number 33, Chris Carr, looking to try and hang on to a podium place. A driver that we've seen sporadically in this championship throughout the course of this season. And, well, he would dearly like to hang on to a podium place for the number 33 car, but Paddy McLuggan, who still is hugely keen to try and keep his championship aspirations alive, is looking to try and gain a place. He dives up the inside. There was almost, I think, contact between the two of them. McLuggan goes through. Chris Carr drops down to fourth. And all of that, whilst this car here, Joe Stables, still continues to lead the race. You can see the advantage he's got between himself and the yellow car of Ben Dimmock, who now is being caught by Paddy McLuggan. Having got ahead of Chris Carr, McLuggan is up into third place. Ben Dimmock is caught up behind some of the slower traffic, and could this be the opportunity for Paddy McLuggan to look to try and hoist himself through into second place? Ben Dimmock, I don't think, overly defended there. One eye on the championship. And, well, he'd have been doing the maths in his head and knowing full well that, well, if McLuggan goes through and takes the lead of the race, that actually still keeps him in a championship leading position. Even with one further race to come later on this weekend. And of course, Joe Stable, who leads, is in a different class. So he would gain maximum points in the PR6 class. Those two are fighting for maximum points in the SR3 class. That's number 28, Elliot Goodman, gaining a position there. Up the inside of Mark Hignett, he goes. So Elliot Goodman and is looking to try and hang on to now what for him would be 12th position and with the top 12 cars being reversed for the third and final race that at the moment would give Elliot Goodman pole. Still very, very busy out there on the circuit as through shot went number 13, Simon Garnson. And here comes now the battle for the lead of the race. Joe Stables under pressure from Paddy McGluggan. He's also got slower traffic to deal with here, Joe. So up towards the completion of the lap they'll go. Then on towards Paddock Hill Bend. Joe Stables and Paddy McGluggan safely negotiate the slower traffic. So it's still the PR6 that leads. The orange SR3 in the hands of the Irishman sitting there in second position. And well, Joe Stables would dearly like to claim a win. The driver who also competes in the... BRDC Formula 4 Championship downhill in towards Graham Hill Bend they'll go still vying for first and second these two as they work their way along the Cooper straight and swing the car in towards the left hander at Surtees corner look at the fight that's going on further down through the order as well it looks as though number 33 Chris Carr is under further pressure here John McLeod looking to try and find a way through at the wheel of number 14 hasn't managed to do so as yet so Chris Carr looking as though he is potentially going to lose further places. We we're hoping to see him on the podium not that many laps ago. As the leading pair appear back into sight again, ready to conclude what is the final lap for them. And it is going to be Joe Stables that wins because Paddy McLuggan almost put it in the gravel there at the final corner. Joe Stables claims the win. Paddy McLuggan comes through in second place, but Ben Dimmock will take the championship. What a victory. Yeah, it was a tough drive to stay ahead of Paddy, but finally uh, managed to see in front. Yeah. You've got to be happy with that, and you're going to want more. Yeah, definitely. That was a, it was, it was a tough drive, yeah. Your dad's not going to be happy with the class, is he? <laughs> no, no, that was it. <laughs> yeah, I think that means that you're going to do well out of this. Listen, well done. Fabulous job. You fought hard. Second position, Paddy. Uh, well done, you got the fastest lap as well, uh, but uh, what happened? We didn't see what happened that put you down. Um, I was just going for the lead um, on my teammate and then just went on the inside and both of us turned in together and just bounced off and both spun. Um, but I managed to get round again, um, get a fire back up again and then just carve my way through to second. Well, we now come to Ben Dimmock that's got a, an almighty huge grin. You are the champion and you said you'd take three thirds, you've got two and you've got the championship. Yeah. Just, I don't really know what to say, I'm just speechless, but for sure it's, it's, been, a, it's been a cracking day for it. So um, I just can't thank my team enough, my um, sponsors, everyone that's helped me through the year. I think it's my fourth year now in Radicals and it's been a long time coming and just an amazing feeling to be up here and taking the top spot and winning the championship. So yeah, fantastic. And just hopefully um, we'll go out in a, in a good style on the last race and try and show them a real pace because I've just been driving like... Well, I don't really know how to describe it, but not, not, not my best, really. Not like a champion, but uh, that much going through my mind and it's hard trying to pull it all together. But now we've got it in the bag, I can hopefully enjoy the last race and just relax and put some good laps in and have a good battle with Paddy. Yeah, well done. Thank goodness you were speechless. Uh <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, a delighted Ben Dimmock there, having secured the 2015 Radical Sprint Championship title. I've got a feeling he won't be resting on his laurels for race three, though. Now that the pressure's off, I think he's going to enjoy this one. For the final time this season, let's go racing. So with 50% of the field reversed for race number three, it's number 28, Elliot Goodman, who finished 12th in race two that lines up on pole. The gap alongside him, though, where we should have seen Nick Jones, number 57, Brian Murphy and Jason Rishover line up on row two. And it's Chris Carr and John McLeod on row three. Watch out, of course, for the newly crowned champion Ben Dimmock and his rival Paddy McLuggan as they start further down through the order in 10th and 11th places, respectively. The lights go out, a great start from Jason Rishover, a pole start from Elliot Goodman for pole position and also a good start from the red car that is Brian Murphy looking to try and feed his way through the order as they all just about managed to avoid bumping into each other heading round through Paddock Hill Bend for the first time in this final race of the 2015 Radical Sprint Championship season Ben Dimmock runs very 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 wide up at Druid's Corner that drops him down through the order and it also means now that into the lead of the race has gone John McLeod so the number 14 car the white car with its purple checkers leads we've also got contact and cars out that looks like Marcelo Maritiotto has got involved there somewhere and I have a feeling that Ewan Mackay might possibly be the other car so there is number 29 which is Marcelo Maritiotto and there is the number 81 car of Ewan Mackay. So they were the two that got together as, by the look of things, Paddy McLuggan is looking to try and work his way past number 57, which was Brian Murphy. So places gained there for Paddy McLuggan, who would dearly like to cap off his season with a victory. As the rest of the field all foul their way through. You can see just how tight it is with this 50% of the field being reversed for race number three. Great little format, it does work. 25 cars on the grid, the top 12 were reversed, Elliot Goodman took pole, but into the lead of the race, there goes John McLeod, so John McLeod leads, hasn't claimed to win as yet so far this season, and not only does he lead, he's got daylight, hasn't he, between himself, and the next of the cars in second place, which is Elliot Goodman in second position, Elliot Goodman is under huge amounts of pressure from Brian Cordwell, who's looking to try and make amends from his mistake that he had in race number two, when he went into the gravel trap out on the far reaches of the circuit, Ben Dimmock's there in fourth place. Then it's Joe Stables, a winner earlier on in race number two, that sits there in fifth position as Brian Cordwell goes to try and take second place away from Elliot Goodman. The black car hangs on to it, though. That puts Brian Cordwell out of position and allows Ben Dimmock to sneak his way through. So Cordwell looking to gain a place, ultimately loses one. Down the Cooper straight in towards the left-hander at Surtees they'll go. Brian Cordwell in danger of losing a further place there because Joe Stables saw a gap. Just about getting the door closed in time was called. Well, there goes our race leader, John McLeod. You can see the advantage he's got between himself and this five-car train, really. Elliot Goodman, Ben Dimmock, Brian Cordwell, then Joe Stables busy squabbling away with Paddy McLuggan as they head round through Hawthorne's corner. It's still the PR6 just ahead of the Orange SR3. So great fights going on for second, third, fourth. Then a gap before we see fifth, sixth and seventh place also. The red car, Brian Murphy now starting to get in on the act as well. And all of this whilst John McLeod remains well and truly in the lead. Also elsewhere down through the order, some good little battles going on. These are for positions outside of the top ten and includes number 17 Chris Blades there alongside number 72 as well, which is Rob Ellis at the wheel of his Radical SR1. But here comes the squabble for second, third and fourth position. The black car of Elliot Goodman, the predominantly yellow car in the hands of the champion for this year, Ben Dimmock. And then Paddy McLuggan, who will want to try and notch up some further points, not just in terms of this championship, but also the Sunoco 200 Challenge, which is a, a separate championship within championships as well. So the trio head out of Graham Hill Bend, along the Cooper Strait, all of the time whilst John McLeod, let's not forget, is out front and leading. And actually has quite a comfortable margin, really, in the early stages of this race. Leading three, though, for second, third and fourth place. Start to head down towards Hawthorne's corner. You can see in the background there also that Brian Caldwell was coming under pressure from Joe Stables, who was looking to try and move the PR6 ahead of the SR3. Well, it certainly looks as though Elliot Goodman now in second place. has got a little bit of daylight, hasn't he, between himself and Ben Dimmock and Paddy McLuggan, who are still squabbling over the final podium place. As... 
They now head towards the conclusion of the lap. Elliot Goodman, who had started to get away, has been caught back up by them and now is going to come under pressure. Let's have a quick look at this. Paddy McLuggan looks perfectly poised there in fourth place to try and draw himself alongside Ben Dimmock. He's got the inside line and as they get towards Paddock Hill Bend, there's that bump just as you exit the pit lane, which I think Paddy McLuggan knew was coming, knew it would unsettle the car and ultimately decided that it might be best just to wait for another opportunity elsewhere around the lap to try and get himself ahead of the champion. So, up towards Surtees. Swing their way through the left-hander. Start to come through Pilgrim's Dock, down Hawthorne Hill. Joe Stables there is now up into what is fifth position. So the PR6 has got ahead of that car there, number 66, which is Brian Caldwell. Who has lost a further place. And as we look at some of the other squabbles that are going on, Elsewhere down through the order, Chris Blades, number 17, is certainly having to work very hard at the wheel. James Barwell's Radical SR1, he was just working his way through and past. As by the look of things, Ben Dimmock has gone through into second place at the expense of Elliot Goodman, who's dropped down into third place and is now coming under pressure from the orange car of Paddy McLuggan, who's looking to draw himself alongside, but unfortunately he's on the outside line heading up towards Paddock Kilbend. It'll have to be a very brave move if he wants to make it round the outside, and that's exactly what Paddy McLuggan does. Great driving, very brave, very fair also by Elliot Goodman. But it does now mean that Ben Dimmock is second, Paddy McLuggan is third, Elliot Goodman is in fourth place, but is again now under pressure immediately from the leading Radical PR6 that we've got in the field. That being race two winner Joe Stables, having a great weekend here at Brands. Around Surtees corner, after Joe Stables, there goes number 66, Brian Caldwell. Again, not too far away. Number 27, fighting away with number nine there. That is Gary Patterson, who is doing battle with David Evans. And right behind those is the number 17 car. That's the black and yellow car of Chris Blades. It's a good fight that is going on for almost sort of 12th, 11th and 13th positions by the look of things. And at this stage, certainly David Evans is having none of it. John McLeod, though, is looking as though he is going to press on and he's going to come through and claim his first victory of the 2015 season in the final round of the championship. And look at this for the battle between Ben Dimmock, who finishes in second place, and Paddy McLuggan. There's not been a great deal to choose for them all season. You've got to be happy with that victory. I'm very happy with that. It's an excellent way to finish the season. Really, really pleased. It was dominant as well. If you say so, I was just in the car doing my thing. Well, this is what I was saying. I mean, it was eight and a half seconds, but we said you managed, you got the break at the beginning because yep. they were all squabbling behind and you did the right thing. You just set into the zone and just did it lap after lap. Yep, just be consistent, you know, hit all your marks, do that kind of thing. OK, great. Well done. First position. In third position was Paddy McLuggan. <laughs> Paddy. <laughs> I'm going to come to you because he's going to have more to say. So, Paddy, that was, uh, that was a lot of fighting, but uh, Elliot Goodman was uh, defending hard, wasn't he? Yeah, Elliot was driving brilliantly. Um, he made it quite difficult for Ben and myself to get past. But um, went to yeah, we got through and just follow Ben through, and then yeah, nearly got him on last lap. But yeah, no, it's good to finish third and you know, on a high. So yeah, brilliant. Been a good weekend. Yeah, it has. It has. I mean, we can walk away with heads high. So yeah, no, really enjoyed it. Well done. Fabulous job. Here he comes. Here, here we go. Got <laughs> Champion, right? We got to time this because we got the <laughs> curfew. Uh, but uh, you managed to uh, get a second position this time, and you've enjoyed the whole weekend clearly. But it's been a lot of pressure. That race was nice, wasn't it? That race was fantastic. I was just wanting to show that I am a true champion and I can drive to my ability. And I had a real good, real good drive then with Paddy, and it was really good fun. Uh, just want to thank Ron, especially Robin. Uh, Vincent, he's my chief mechanic and he's done a great job all year and all my family for being here and supporting me and my friends. Can't ask for anything more, just get on the beer tonight and celebrate and <laughs> enjoy. Thank you very much. Well, done. well, that's it for the racing here at Brands Hatch and also that concludes the season for the 2015 Radical Sprint Championship. I think you'll agree it's been a fantastic year of racing so make sure you join us when we'll be back in 2016.